Yeah. Good afternoon, participants. Good afternoon. Uh, welcome to uh, second session, day three. Now, this session is going to be facilitated by Dr. Ahmad Ali from University Department of uh, Life Sciences, University of uh, Mumbai. Uh, Dr. Ahmad Ali possesses uh, uh, a post graduation, post graduation from uh, in biochemistry and hold his, that is from Jamia Hamzad University, New Delhi. He hold his PhD uh, in life sciences from University of uh, Mumbai. Currently, he's working as assistant professor in the University Department of Life Sciences. Uh, his research interest includes non-enzymatic glycosylation, DNA and protein damage, oxidative stress, anti glycation properties of natural products. His broad research area covers molecular biology and uh, biochemistry. He is a recognized uh, supervisor for uh, postgraduate students and uh, uh, doctoral uh, students. He has attracted <coughs> funds from uh, uh, national level uh, funding agencies like UGC and other uh, famous funding agencies. Uh, he is a reviewer in very famous and prominent journals like Frontiers in Plant Science, Nanotechnology Review, Indian Journal of Biotechnology, Bioscience and Bioengineering. Uh, uh, communications, etc. He also holds several uh, administrative uh, responsibilities. He has published several uh, research papers, peer reviewed research papers in national and uh, international journals. He has written book chapters and uh, he's, he, he has uh, uh, acted as guest speaker in several forums. So, on behalf of Tomorrow Guru College of Technology. Again, uh, on behalf of AACT, my sincere welcome to Dr. Ahmad Ali. Professor, we are eagerly waiting for, for you exclusively to listen uh, phenolic acid and uh, anti glycation properties. Please, dice is yours. Thank you, sir. Uh, it's an honor for me to be invited for this uh, on this team of uh, participants uh, and uh, thank you for giving me an opportunity and inviting me to deliver a lecture in uh, this course and this program by AICT and thank you for your kind permission sir uh, kind uh, introduction sir um, so i'll start my lecture sir Sir, uh, my slides are visible. Yes, now it is sharing. Now it is sharing problem. Yeah. Uh, it's visible. Now it is visible, sir. Okay. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Sir. Visible process. Please go ahead. Please yes, go ahead. Please go ahead. So, uh, as uh, sir mentioned, the whole theme of the uh, CTP is phenolic acids and their role in the health promoting activities. So, I'll be uh, talking about uh, the role of this phenolic acids in one of the very important process uh, which may have uh, heard and uh, which uh, we are aware of. So I'll be talking about the role of this uh, uh, group of secondary metabolites in the process of glycation. So uh, as we uh, have been hearing about the diabetes and uh, other processes, uh, we know that uh, sugar has become a metabolite of concern and uh, we have become curious about uh, uses of this. Uh, we are trying to restrict the uses of this because it has been implicated in many of the diseases. So if we have, if we don't use it uh, in a controlled manner, it can lead to various metabolic disorders. 
and these uh, metabolic disorders can also so as far as uh, industry is concerned they are uh, worried about this uh, or every human being is worried about aging process so wrinkle can be initiated by the sugars we'll see in this lecture how it is done so the overview is like we'll basically i'll be starting uh, with the uh, an overview of diabetes, uh, then I'll go to glycation and uh, the what are the products which are generated during the process of glycation. And uh, a brief mention about phenolic acids because uh, I'm sure uh, other speakers must have deliberated on phenolic acids and uh, their role in uh, uh, anti uh, in the glycation process uh, and what we are doing basically. So we all know that uh, the life processes are basically uh, taken care of by the interaction of biomolecules, which include proteins, carbohydrates, nucleic acids. So these interactions are basically meant for generation of energy and the generation of raw material required to carry out the work and other cellular processes. So if there is any error in this biochemical interaction, it may lead to an error which may have fatal consequences for the organism. So these consequences may be due to the toxic accumulation of reaction products in the cell, damage due to oxidation and deficiency of an enzyme or protein, or over stimulation of certain metabolic pathways. One of the uh, such reaction which we uh, see in our body as a result of uh, failure of this uh, metabolic interaction network is glycation. I'll talk about this in the detail. It's basically a non-enzymatic amino carbonyl reaction between the sugars. We all know glucose is very important metabolite. So mainly we use uh, glucose for energy purposes and generation of some uh, raw material from this, which are carbon related. So it's very important to have the balanced metabolism of glucose in our body. Any case of a minor fluctuation in metabolism of glucose will impair the functioning of, of many organs, organs and tissues, which will lead to the disease condition. And the two conditions, uh, which uh, pathological conditions, which we see because of the glucose metabolism and uh, other processes related to it, are hyper hypoglycemia and hyperglycemia. So uh, just a brief mention about diabetes because we are all aware of and uh, uh, how glucose is related to this. So it has become a major health public con uh, major health concern globally because it has led to led an increase in the number of people affected by this disease in the last year. In the last uh, two decades, we have uh, seen a fourfold rise in the patients suffering from this uh, disease. And India is becoming a major center for uh, this diabetic people because uh, uh, rough estimates say that out of 100 people, 30 live in India. So this can uh, this graph shows how uh, the prevalence of diabetic uh, diabetes has increased in the last. Uh, 10, 20 years and the projections say that it may cross 600 million say, by 200, uh, 2045. So basically, if we see uh, at the molecular level, diabetes is basically uh, originated from or manifests the dysregulation of glucose metabolism. And among the metabolic disorders, it is one of the most uh, prevalent one. So the two conditions which lead to diabetes, and we also know that they are divided into two groups, type 1 and type 2. They are divided into many other groups, but the two major concerns which affect normal population is, one is the inability of the pancreas to produce insulin, and inability of the cells to effectively utilize the produced insulin. So we call them as type 1 diabetes mellitus and type 2. There are other gestational and uh, neonatal diabetes and other things. So, so diabetes, the consequences and other conditions which lead to diabetes or we can say that interlinked to diabetes are obesity, nephropathy, 
hypertension, dyslipidemia, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, and systematic inflammation. This uh, chart shows like uh, what are the reasons for the origin of the secondary complications of the diabetic metabolism. We uh, see uh, some enzymes involvement, some oxidative stress involvement, uh, altered lipoprotein metabolism, carbonyl stress, and Page's hypothesis. I'll talk about so the overall diabetes management is includes it includes uh, ages inhibition inhibition of aldose at molecular level i'm talking about i'm not talking about the general uh, uh, process where we control that glucose where we control the um, uh, we change our lifestyles i'm not talking about at molecular level what body does that is the so uh, as i mentioned that uh, diabetes the major symptoms of diabetes are hyperglycemia and hyperlipidemia and these induce inflammatory immune responses like glucose oxidation, auto oxidation, induction of polyol pathway, and uh, ultimately they affect the antioxidant defense system. So, uh, what is hyperglycemia? We all know uh, hyperglycemia is the above normal glucose level in the blood circulation. So, if this hyperglycemia persist in for longer duration in the body, it can lead to deterioration of blood vessels and cause damage to vital organs like kidney, nervous system, eyes and heart. As we see uh, with the diabetics that uh, uh, the fertility of diabetes is uh, mainly because of the multiple organ failures. So uh, we can see uh, macrovascular, wherein uh, heart attack, stroke and peripheral vascular disease and micro vascular where we see retinopathy uh, like cataract or uh, neuropathy or nephropathy like uh, kidney malfunctions and so so diabetes at molecular level can be summed up as hyperglycemia and resulting glucotoxicity means the above normal level of glucose which becomes toxic to the or to our body so as a result of this there is an accumulation of undesired products due to excess amount of glucose in the body. So, moving ahead, the modern theory of theory of diabetes suggests that the manifestation is because of oxidative stress and glycation, and these processes are involved in most of the secondary complications of the diabetes, where I have mentioned nephropathy and neuropathy heart attack and uh, multiple layers. So, when uh, there is excess amount of glucose in the body, what does it do? It modifies the proteins in the body and the modifications may be by a different mechanism. Uh, proteins may get modified by carbonylation or nitration or attachment of succinate group or attachment of acetylation group as well as attachment of a sugar moiety that is called as protein glycation and that is the theme of our lecture. So what is glycation? So as in the previous uh, diagram you, uh, we have seen that uh, uh, during hyperglycemia proteins get modified because of the various modifications, molecular modifications. One of them, uh, one of the very important is glyca glycation. So this is because of the reductive nature of glucose because it has an aldehyde group. Okay, so most of the sugars have a carbonyl group uh, which make them active. So uh, coming to the definition of glycation, it is a spontaneous non-enzymatic amino carbonyl reaction between sugars and long-lived proteins, lipids and nucleic acid. So basically the reaction is between the carbonyl group of the sugars, any sugar, it can be glucose, fructose, galactose, or uh, ribose, any sugar which is present in the body, the carbonyl group of that sugar will react it with the free amino group of the, or the amino group of the proteins, lipids, or any nucleosid. So as we know that uh, proteins are long-lived molecules and they are uh, in the circulation. So the they are the most, uh, they are the ones which get affected most because of 
this glycation process. Okay. So uh, this is an irreversible process. This is the uh, diagram or scheme which shows that glucose uh, reacts with a protein or amino acids and then uh, leads to the formation of safe bases which uh, further undergo modifications and lead to a kind of uh, products which are known as fructosamines or ketosamines uh, and they are commonly known as amadoid products because this this was the, uh, he was the person who discovered this and then uh, finally coming to the end products of the glycation which are known as advanced glycation products end products and they are the ones which cause maximum damage to the body so uh, sir I'll, I'll be requesting the participants if they are uh, because they are from diverse backgrounds if they are they find difficult to understand they can ask me no 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 issues no issues no sir but i have uh, yes. uh, i have educated them like at the end of the session i can ask but if uh, certain points are very complicated now i request participants to in yeah, yes, I mean, you know, yes. points you can interrupt, or otherwise, at the end of the session, you can ask for it. So, just yeah, anyways, yes, sir. thank you. So, uh, glycation can be divided into uh, three stages early, intermediate, and late stage. Early stage is the one where the uh, carbonyl group of the sugars or or to be very specific, aldehyde group of the glucose and the epsilon amino group of lysine or arginine or N-terminal amino group of the proteins, they react with each other in absence of enzyme or this process does not re require any enzyme. Just to differentiate from another process which happens in the endoplasmic reticulum and the Golgi apotis where the proteins are naturally modified with the sugars that process is known as glycosylation and that happens in the presence of enzyme here this process is completely non enzymatic so in early stage the interaction of the sugar and the amino group of the protein leads to the formation of a sif base these sif bases they undergo several chemical rearrangements to form the amadoid products which are also called as early glycation products so uh, this diagram uh, can can show that early stages sugar and proteins react safe bases are formed they uh, undergo further modification and lead to the generation of amadori products and in the next stage that is the intermediate stage these amadori products they get modified and leads to another group of molecules which are known as uh, dicarbonyl compounds like methyl glycyl or diethylglycyl uh, uh, or di uh. and in the last stage that is the irreversible stage and slower one advanced glycation and products are formed so some of the intermediate uh, stage examples the products of intermediate uh, stage are glycyl methyl glycyl and deoxyglucosone Late stage, Amadori products or these intermediate stage products, they get converted to uh, this advanced glycation products. And I, as I mentioned, that these are the group of molecules which cause maximum damage to the. So ultimately, when they are formed, they appear brown in the brownish in the color. And that's why it, the reason that it was uh, discovered by uh, a scientist. Uh, known as Mallard and in 1912 since then this reaction glycation is in common terms or the for the food industry is also known as Maillard reaction and we see this reaction happening in our cooking also we uh, when we cook the food product ingredients become brown that is because of uh, that's also because of the reaction between the amino groups and the this basically sugars and the proteins so uh, one can can understand and there a lot of research has been conducted like when, uh, what is the amount of uh, advanced glycation and products in our food items so we can uh, see that there are two sources of uh, advanced glycation and products one is exogenous and the other one is endogenous endogenous is like our body is generated and exogenous is our 
what we consume through cooked food or any other beverages or uh, packed foods. So uh, I'll uh, draw your attention here. Uh, those who have uh, been with a diabetic patient or uh, those who have studied about diabetic, they may have come across this term that is known as HbA1c. That is one of the parameters which doctors suggest for the diabetics. We know that uh, uh, doctors suggest uh, diabetics to go for uh, fasting and postprandial blood glucose estimation. And they also suggest uh, this measurement, HbA1c, that is basically a glycated hemoglobin molecule. So it accumulates in the body as a result of diabetes. Concentration of HbA1c provides a glycemic history of the previous 120 days. That is the major difference between the normal uh, glucose testing, which we do in the lab, fasting and postprandial. That gives an indication of a 12 hour or something like that, not more than a day or so. But if you want to know that whether this person has a history of diabetes of last few weeks or several uh, last few months, one of the best parameters to be measured is glycated hemoglobin. And uh, if someone is aware, the normal value is below 6. If the value of glycated hemoglobin crosses 6, it means that person has been diabetic or hypo, hyperglycemic since more than three, four months. It means his blood glucose level has been higher since last three, four months. Because the higher blood glucose level in the blood circulation glycates the hemoglobin protein, which has a shelf life of 120 days. So we can see that uh, normal uh, uh, glucose molecules uh, in the circulation they are here in the RBCs but when the excess amount of uh, glucose is there hemoglobin molecules are glycated or uh, glucose molecules get attached to so the ultimate result is that this glycated hemoglobins lose their function so uh, this cartoon shows that what is the period to do various clinical tests for diabetes. Blood glucose, it gives, it gives uh, an idea about uh, one day or something like that. Several hours maximum. Then we can go for uh, another protein uh, which gets uh, severely glycated in the hyperglycemic condition is albumin which is present in the serum. So this will give an idea about the diabetic condition or hyperglycemic condition for almost two weeks. On the other hand, a measurement of glycated hemoglobin gives an idea about more than a month or something like that. So, so what are ages? These are very heterogeneous group of molecules. Uh, more than 200 molecules have been discovered so far. There are three major routes of the formation of glycation, uh, advanced glycation products. One is auto-oxidation of sugars means the sugars, sugar molecules which are there in the body, they undergo auto-oxidation, amadori rearrangements and sick bases. And as I mentioned previously that ingested foods, food items are another uh, very important sources of ages in the body. So intestinal absorption of exogenous ages affected by digestive enzymes and microbial flora. So accordingly it varies from person to person. Now, what are the factors which uh, affect the production of ages? These include oxygen. So, oxygen favors the formation of ages, reactive oxygen species, and redox active transition metals. So, some other factors like diet and smoking also influence production of ages. Now, what are the diseases which we uh, come across or which we see where the glycation process is involved, we see ages and that was the first slide also where we, that do sugars cause wrinkling of the skin? Yes, because glycation is involved in the process of aging. We see the involvement 
of dislocation in diabetes mellitus, neurodegenerative disorders like Alzheimer's and Parkinson's, uh, cataracts, retinopathy, arteriosclerosis, increased susceptibility to infection, and so on. So uh, now how do this glycation or how does this, this process of glycation cause its toxicity or harm, show its harmfulness? It's because of the because of the impairment of the functioning of the molecules. For example, glycation causes precipitation of the proteins, cross-linking of proteins, aggregation of the proteins. So ultimately what happens, the proteins of the body like glycated hemoglobin, glycated albumin, glycated collagen and all these proteins, they lose their function and they are, once they go this kind of modif modifications like for precipitation, cross-linking or aggregation, they are marked for degradation by the body's proteosome system. They also, this glycation process, they also lead to the generation of reactive, reactive oxygen species and reactive reactive nitrogen species. So the damage or the toxicity of glycation is also through the free radicals which are generated in the body. And these free radicals with or without or along with uh, glycation products, they can cause uh, damage to the molecules, especially DNA and lipids and so on. So how do we control whether the body has a mechanism to control or not? Yes, body has an intrinsic mechanism. Normally, uh, uh, let me tell you to you that normally also, not even uh, not only during the diabetic, normally also we produce glycation products. But the body has a mechanism to control this glycation products. The effect of or the toxic effect of glycation or harmful effect of glycation is shown only when when the person is hyperglycemic for a longer period of time, and that longer period of hyperglycemic condition leads to an accumulation of glycation products in the body. So what are the systems which uh, take care of glycation products in the body? We have enzyme systems like aldehyde reductase, glyoxylase, amadoriasis. We have proteasome systems where which degrade age-modified proteins. We have uh, uh, a specific re a receptor that is known as RAISE uh, that also takes care of this uh, Ages. We have macrophage system where the peptides are disposed. Uh, some uh, drugs have been developed. One of them is aminoguanidine, although it has shown its own uh, harmful effect. But one of the very uh, good way to take care of uh, diabetic conditions when we go to uh, a diabetes specialist, they also suggest that you take uh, vitamins and uh, antioxidants. And that uh, correlates with why uh, the fact in one of the my slides where the modern theory of diabetes suggests the implications of diabetes is because of the free radicals generated and glycation product. So if we take natural compounds, like, I mean, uh, for example, antioxidants or vitamins, they are quite helpful in reducing the harmfulness or toxicity of glycation. And people have been working on anti-glycation agents and antioxidants from the plant source and they are trying to. So uh, this was so far about uh, the glycation and its effect and all those things. Uh, for a common man, uh, when we don't, I mean, uh, I mean, every common man, man doesn't know about the glucose reaction with the proteins and damage to DNA and proteins and all so on. But uh, how do we re reduce the toxic effect of ages? One is that uh, one of the best thing is that reduce your consumption of sugar, eat vegetables and fruits raw, wild, or steamed. Limit your consumption of processed and brown foods. Brown foods, I, as I mentioned, that browning of food is basically because of the reaction between the carbohydrates and the proteins. Cook means low and slow. Avoid high fructose corn syrup because fructose is more efficient, uh, more potent, potent in glycation as compared compared to glucose because it it is more reactive than glucose. Drink lots of water to get rid of your uh, edges through urine or something. Supplement with pyroxamine. 
a vitamin uh, which has been shown to have anti glycation and antioxidant uh, activity and in one of the my slides i showed that uh, showed that diet as well as the smoking also leads to the generation of helps in the generation of ages so smoking uh, stopping uh, smoking can also help be helpful in the protection from the ages how are this uh, uh, glycation products or anti glycation properties of plants are measured in the lab we have several assays uh, several spectro photometric assays which we can consider uh, call as biochemical techniques one is nitro blue tetrasodium assay which detects the early glycation product then we have dnph assay which detects the advanced glycation products then we have uh, dtnbc which uh, measures the modification in the product, uh, proteins then we have uh, assays for the measurement of glycation which is uh, aggregation which is caused due to uh, glycation we have tba to measure the harmful effect of uh, this glycation on lipids then we have some analytical techniques like elisa hplc lcms fluorescence spectroscopy and boronate affinity chromatography so we have some use uh, we have used some of these techniques and uh, assays to measure the amount of glycation products generated in the assay mixture and the in vitro uh, anti glycating properties of the plants and natural compounds which are available so uh, as the theme of the lecture is what is the role of phenolic acids in the process of glycation uh, i'll briefly introduce what are phenolic acids as i am sure that uh, some other speakers also might have dealt upon so we all know that plants are uh, rich in uh, many of the metabolites which are uh, divided into two groups primary metabolites and secondary metabolites and in last several decades a lot of interest has been generated towards secondary metabolites because these secondary metabolites are not only beneficial to plants they also have been proved to be very helpful in uh, health promoting activities in the animals and especially human beings so uh, one of the major groups of this uh, secondary metabolites which uh, has been characterized includes phenolic acids so these are basically a non vitamin antioxidants and not only antioxidants they are also having some other activities so one of the major advantage or potential of this uh, phenolic acids uh, is because of its lipophilicity which is uh, affected by the hydroxyl groups so list uh, length of the ester moiety also very important for hydroxy polyhydroxylated so phenolic acids are basically a diverse group of compounds which are identified by by a presence of hydroxyl group linked to an aromatic hydrocarbon group for example benzene the structural diversity of these compounds ranges from simple structure phenolic acids to polyphenols to polymeric compounds and one of the simplest member of this is carbolic acid or phenol C6H5OH phenolic acids are uh, polyhydroxylated phytochemicals so they can be further uh, divided into several groups flavonoids phenolic acids and tannins uh, some of the representative structures of these phenolic acids are uh, hydroxybenzoic acid hydroxycinamic acids flavonoids so uh, this Uh, diagram shows the classification of phenolics polyphenols simple phenols tannins flavonoids phenolic acids fumarins and hydrolyzable non hydrolyzable tannins then we have phenolic acid hydroxycinamic acid and hydroxybenzoic acid so uh, research in the last several de decades with the phenolic acids has proved that they have uh, major health promoting activities uh they have been done at the cell lines level or animal studies also so 
this include antioxidants anti obesity anti diabetic anti microbial anti inflammatory and anti glycation properties so what we have done we have checked the effect of some of the phenolic acids uh, basically three phenolic acids we have selected uh, that include gallic acid ferulic acid ferulic acid and cinnamic acid so uh, we measured the browning uh, browning is a very uh, crude method of measurement because uh, sometimes browning happens and sometimes sometimes browning doesn't happen but people have adopted this as the uh, one of the parameters like if browning happens and when uh, some molecules with carbonyl groups and amino groups are incubated and if browning happens it may be because of the maillard reaction or glycation reaction so we have uh, shown here with the three amino acids that uh, uh, uh actually though, there is no effect of this uh, Uh, phenolic acids on uh, browning so as i mentioned but uh, when we measure the uh, early glycation products we have shown some kind of uh, results with the uh, this is a more accurate method of the measurement of early glycation products that is a previous one was peroxide peroxidate method but that has not been uh, being used now so fructosamine uh, method uh, is one uh, very common method uh, that is uh, done in the lab uh, with the use of uh, nitro blue tetrazoleum chloride uh, here we can show that gallic acid is more potent in preventing the formation of early glycation products then we moved that to the measurement of carbonyl con content that is uh, an indicator of uh, advanced glycation products so here we can see that all of them are uh, quite efficient but uh, again uh, gallic acid is more potent in the prevention of advanced glycation products then we uh, check the effect of this glycation uh, products on uh, dna damage uh, it may be uh, at times difficult to understand but uh, uh, let me explain here this is a controlled dna the first one uh, in the uh, lane 1 what we call as lanes they 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 and we have loaded the dna uh, the first one is uh, the undamaged one the second one is damaged one and uh, in the 6 7 8 uh, we have shown that uh, gallic acid is quite efficient at higher concentration in preventing the damage of the dna so just for uh, Uh, the information of a common man that uh, a band, what we call as a band in the DNA uh, for the DNA, a band in the blue, uh, lower portion indicates that DNA is not damaged, and a higher amount of higher intensity of the DNA in the upper section shows that there is more damage to the DNA. We also check the effect of curcumin on all these parameters. we used uh, the browning and uh, fructosamine carbonyl content we can see here that carbonyl com content or advanced glycation products was reduced significantly or more than uh, by more than 70% uh this is a, a flow uh, spectrophotometric analysis where we show that what is the whether there is an interaction between the Uh, protein and the drug molecule which we have used the clip here and it can show that that there is if you increase the concentration of this curcumin we have uh, used in 10 micromolar we can show that that increasing the amount of curcumin increases the reading of the bsa that means quenching of the bsa reading it means there is more interaction between the curcumin which we can call as drug and the bsa uh, this is a very important parameter when we are designing a drug that whether there is an interaction between the protein and the drug or ligand or not so this uh, diagram clearly shows that that there is a there is an interaction between the protein we used another uh, metabolite this is not a phenolic acid but uh, we have used uh, 
another uh, this uh, secondary metabolite from uh, black cumin seeds which we consume uh, and one of the major part constituent of that black cumin is thymoquinone so here also we could show that uh, thymoquinone is quite efficient in uh, reducing this this is the control which means 100% means uh, uh, this is the amount uh, where in uh, there is maximum amount of the glycation and if we add some compound or test compound if there is a decrease as compared to this 100% it means this molecule may be anti glycating so we can show here that both early glycation and advanced glycation products have been significantly reduced in the presence of uh, thymoquinone we did uh, aggregation studies and we could show that uh, with the help of fungoid and thioflavin t assays that there is a significant amount of inhibition of the aggregation of the proteins in the presence of thymoquinone uh, we did another spectrofluorimetric assay where we measured the total amount of the glycation products that is known as uh, total ages and uh, this uh, shows that thymoquinone was quite efficient in at higher concentration that is 20 micromolar was quite efficient in inhibiting the amount of or preventing of the amount of accumulation of advanced glycation products so this uh, again shows that uh, there is an interaction between the thymoquinone and bsa so this can be selected as a drug molecule so again we have shown that uh, what is the effect of damage or uh, what is the effect of thymoquinone on on the like oxidative damage of the dna here we can show that uh, glycation caused the damage of the dna as you can see in the lane three but if you add uh, this thymoquinone to the glycation system it almost reverses or the prevents the damage of the dna so uh, with all these uh, results we can show that uh, phenolic acids are quite uh, efficient in preventing the damage of the biomolecules whether uh, it's protein or dna molecules so uh, they also prevented the glycoxidative why we call as glycoxidative damage because we assume that glycation also leads to the formation of free radicals so so these free radicals along with the glycation can cause dna damage and we have shown in our study that uh, all these molecules like uh, curcumene thymoquinone and phenolic acids like calic acid they were uh, quite potent in preventing this damage so with this i am coming to an end to the presentation on this now yes sir professor thank you